Okay, so let's uh, continue with the root locus method. So um, this method is used to find the closed loop stability margin and like um, so let's just like um, go over a closed loop system as we discussed before so we have the plant transfer function the controller transfer function the sensor or measurement transfer function and you guys saw that we can find the closed loop transfer function by GCGP divided by 1 plus GCGPGH. Okay, so now look at these two, right? So let's just combine these two together so we can write them as GCS times GPS, right? A bigger transfer function, just combine them together. And now let's factor out a constant um, out of this two um, transfer functions multiplication. So I'm call the rest of the, um, the, just lump all the other terms into another transfer function, let's call it G of S, okay? So the controller can be a P controller, PI controller, PID controller, any other controller. We just like, we assume that we can take a constant out of these so out of these and like call the rest of the system and lump all the other terms into uh, a transfer function called g of s so it's just basically a renaming of the variables so this transfer function or this closed loop system now converts to this um, um, closed loop system where like we just replace gc multiplied by gp by k which is a scalar multiplied by all the other terms that has s in them right so just kgs is equal to gcs times gps now the the closed loop transfer function is just going to be replaced it's going to be G, we replace gc by gp by kg and so like the closed loop transfer function is kg divided by 1 plus kg times gh okay so the whole point of root lucas is to see how changing this scalar would change the place of poles of the closed loop system so like how changing k would make the system stable or unstable like or how poles of the closed loop system are gonna move as k changes so the whole point of root locus is to see how k would impact the position of poles of closed loop system okay um so I'm just going to erase this. And write down the transfer function. T of S is equal to K, which is a scalar, times G of S divided by 1 plus K G of S G H S. Right, and again, I'm just gonna write this here. KGS is basically GCS times GPS, okay? Now, okay, so we wanna find the poles of the closed loop transfer function, the poles of the closed loop transfer function. Why do we wanna find the poles? Because poles would let us know about the stability of the closed loop system. So where are the poles of the closed loop transfer function? The poles of the closed loop transfer function is where the denominator is equal to zero, right? So it's where one plus kgs times gh of s is equal to zero, or where kgs GHS is equal to negative 1, 
okay? Negative one in the complex plane, it's somewhere here. Right? What well, is exactly here, right? So it means that the magnitude of KGS GHS is gonna be one and the phase of K G S G H S is gonna be 180 degrees or negative 180 degrees, they're the same. Okay, so the closed loops uh, and, and the root locus we change K. Uh, we assume that k is always positive so k changes from zero to positive infinity right so um in that case k is just gonna be equal to just we can take it out of the absolute or the magnitude so it's because it's a positive number it's gonna be one over magnitude of g s g h s Okay, and because again this is a positive number, its uh, phase is zero, so it means that the poles of the system is where k is equal to this number, and phase of GSHS or GHS is equal to 180 degrees or negative 180 degrees. Okay, um, so again, that's why like unity gain and 180 degree phase or negative 180 degree phase are important numbers. That's why like we had the phase margin and the gain margin, right? So this is, just remember these two things. So the poles of the system, the closed loop system happens where k is equal to this value and uh, the phase of GS, GS times GHS is equal to 180 degrees. Okay. Okay, let me erase this part. gonna keep this here okay um and let me maybe draw this one more time here okay this is GS and this is GH okay, this is Y this is reference this is error and this is, this is okay so let's assume that we're just going to look at this term gs times ghs right um just going to write this in terms of numerator 